Hey everyone! Today we're going to take a look at one of my current research projects, which uses all of the 2D nanomaterials we've talked about so far, Pickering Emulsions. Emulsions are surprisingly common in everyday life. Household paint, egg meringue, and even milk are emulsions you probably have in your home. Simple ones are really easy to make, too. Add water and oil to a bottle with a small amount of washing up liquid, and shake! What you get is lots of tiny drops of oil floating about in the water. If you've added enough washing up liquid, the droplets should be small and stay around for a long time. So how does that all work? First, we have to talk about surface tension. Liquids are made up of individual molecules loosely packed together. They have enough room and energy to shuffle past one another, but usually not quite enough to escape and become a gas. These molecules are held together by intermolecular forces, which you can think of as being tiny springs between molecules. These forces need to be overcome in order for a molecule to escape the liquid, a process which we call evaporation. If you think about a molecule in the middle of a liquid, compared to one at the liquid's surface, we can see that it must be easier to pull that surface molecule away. There are fewer neighbours per molecule, if you like, at the surface than in the bowl. This means that in order to have created that surface in the first place, you have put in some energy. This is what we're talking about when we say surface tension. Making extra interfaces costs energy, and the reverse is also true. Reducing the amount of surface you have gives back energy. This is why soap bubbles are spherical. A sphere has the lowest amount of surface area compared to the fixed volume it contains. So what if our liquid interface isn't with air, but with another liquid? And this depends on the detailed chemical physics, but there are basically two possibilities. If the molecules of the two liquids are very similar, then you get a lot of energy back when the two liquids are in contact, and their interfacial tension is low. Quite often, this means that the two will dissolve in one another. The other possibility is that the two liquids are very different, and the molecules don't recover much energy by being in contact. Then, the interfacial tension is high. In this case, they won't mix, but separate out like the oil and vinegar in a salad dressing. However, we can stop them separating by using surfactants. Surfactant is short for surface active agent. It's a fancy word for soap. If you regularly read labels on things, you may have spotted phrases like anionic or non-ionic surfactant. But what does that really mean? Surfactants are molecules with areas that prefer to be in contact with different things. One end is similar to water, and is called hydrophilic. The other end is more like oil, and is called hydrophobic. Because of this dual nature, surfactants are also known as amphiphiles. When added to water and oil, these molecules find that they are most happy at the interface. The hydrophobic end mixes with the oil, and the hydrophilic end sits in the water. This has the effect of lowering the interfacial tension, and that's the reason why we wash things up using soap. It basically makes water and dirt happier to be in contact. In the case of emulsions, it means that instead of the water and oil completely separating, you get tiny, stable droplets. Now, you may be thinking, what's that got to do with nanomaterials, though? Excellent question, avid viewer. The answer is quite simple. You don't have to use soap. Graphene can be used to stabilise emulsions, too. An emulsion stabilised by solid particles instead of surfactant molecules is called a Pickering emulsion. Named after Percival Spencer Umfreville Pickering, who published a paper on the effect in 1907. What you get is tiny graphene shells that form around the droplets. Because the graphene is really electrically conductive, this means that the droplets can conduct electricity too. There are several things my group are actively looking at using this effect for, but one of them is to detect tiny stretches when we pack these black bubbles together. What we've discovered is that graphene emulsions are really very sensitive to tiny strains. When we stretch this sensor I've built, the graphene bubbles get squashed, which increases their surface area and pulls the graphene sheets apart. This effect profoundly changes how conductive the sensor is, making it really easy to detect very tiny movements. This type of sensor is great for a lot of body motion sensing applications in areas like medicine or sports science. Finally, 
we aren't limited to soap or graphene. Using other materials like molybdenum disulfide, which is a two-dimensional semiconductor, we can do all sorts of other cool stuff, like making flexible batteries and supercapacitors. Our emulsions can also work like inks, so one day we'll be able to print electronic circuits directly onto different surfaces, even paper. And with that, I'll wrap up for now, but be sure that there'll be more on this as the research evolves. See you next time! Thanks for watching everyone! If you like what I do, please consider supporting my work via my Patreon page, where you'll have access to a range of in-depth discussions on the physics, chemistry and engineering of nanomaterials. If you'd like regular updates, please subscribe and like the video. It helps so much, and I look forward to talking to you again soon.